What's up everybody, I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts and welcome to this week's edition of Wax Melt Wednesday. Now the wax melts we're making today go by a couple different names. Some people call it wax brittle because it kind of looks like peanut brittle and some people call it wax bark because it looks like the peppermint bark candy. But whatever you choose to call it, it's actually the easiest type of wax melt to make because we don't need any type of specific mold or container to actually make these and because of the way we make it, it allows us to be a lot more creative and incorporate a lot of different designs and colors into the wax melt. So let's go and get started and check out our supplies. For our wax that we've already got melted down, we're using just general purpose paraffin from Hobby Lobby. That is the big slab of paraffin wax that you can buy from the uh, candle making section of Hobby Lobby, made by Country Lane. There wasn't a lot of information on the packaging. I actually had to dig through the Country Lane website to find more information on it. But basically it's just a straight paraffin wax, no additives, a melt point of 140 with a fragrance load max of 6%. That 6% fragrance load will be okay because you'll see at the end there's really no specific size that we have to keep these wax melts. And that 140 melting point is important because we want this type of wax to be as firm and as hard as we possibly can get it because in the end we're actually going to break it up. So we don't want it to be soft or have any give to it. We want it to just have that really nice crisp snap so we can be able to break this sheet into smaller pieces. So we've got our wax melted down. We're also going to need just some type of cookie sheet. And you can use any type of metal sheet. Uh, you can use like a brownie pan. The thing is though, you don't want to get this too thick, otherwise you're not going to be able to break it. So the thickness of the cookie sheet works great. We're not going to want to get this any more thicker than probably about a quarter to a half an inch. So for this type of wax melt, you can get really creative with your colors and your designs. So for today's project, we're going to attempt to make watermelon inspired wax riddle. Uh, for that, we're using watermelon fragrance oil from Rustic Essentials. Which is probably the most spot on watermelon that I've ever found. It's not the real sugary watermelon that smells like candy or bubble gum. It actually smells like a real watermelon sliced open. And for those colors, we're going to be using Apple Melon from Lone Star Candle Supply and Red Dark Pink from Lone Star Candle Supply. That will give us the watermelon colors we need. And because it's a wax melt that's not going to go in an open flame, we don't have any fire hazard issues to worry about. So to top it off, we're going to be using Black Glitter. That's going to hopefully give the effect of the uh, black watermelon seeds. So once we put this all together, it's going to smell just like watermelon and hopefully the color and the glitter will come together and give it that nice watermelon inspired look. So now we've got our wax melted down. It's at temperature. We're ready to add our fragrance oil and our dye. This is where it becomes a little bit different from your uh, traditional candle or wax melt is we want to let this temperature get fairly cool. The reason being we want it to be a little bit lumpy when it comes out because we want to be able to work with our squirrels and our color barriers. The normal pouring range for this would be 150 to 160. However, if we did that in our cookie sheet, we would basically just have one layer on top of the other and we wouldn't be able to get that swirl pattern that we're going to be after. So we're going to let this cool to probably about 115, 120, as cool as we can get it to actually still be able to pour it. So we're going to go ahead and add our 6% fragrance load and we're going to add our liquid candle dye to each one. So we're going to mix this really well, give it a second to cool down just a bit more. Now there is some starting to uh, solidify on the edges of my pouring pot. That's not a huge deal. Once we get our initial base done, we can reheat it. We can kind of drizzle over the top of it to give it a bit more color splash. But for now I want it cool so I can kind of keep the colors separate. So we are using red and green for this project. That's going to hopefully give us that watermelon look. Uh, like I said earlier, you can use up to multiple colors. One thing I will caution you about though is keep in mind your color wheel. Some colors don't mix well. If you mix a bunch of different colors, you're going to end up with brown once it gets in the melter. That's going to be pretty unattractive looking. So if you are mixing a lot of colors, just be mindful of how they're going to look when they all mix together. So we're at about 120. I'm going to go and attempt to pour just a little bit. You can kind of see how it's separating in the pan. That's really what I want. I'm just going to keep working one layer on top of the other. Give that just a second to set up. This is going to take you a minute before each pour because once I pour the red I've got to let it set up just a little bit so that way when I pour the green on top of it they don't just mix together right away. I want to keep those colors as separate as I can. All 
All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and add our uh, watermelon seeds. And we're done for now. Admittedly, it looks like a science experiment gone wrong, but once this cools, we'll be able to take it out of the cookie sheet. We'll break it up into our smaller pieces. You'll be able to see that color layering, and it'll actually look pretty good. So now we'll just let this cool for a couple hours till it's ready to come out of the pan. So our wax brittle is completely done. Still kind of looks a bit science experiment-ish. But to finish it up, all we got to do is just give it a few nice tabs, break it into smaller pieces. Now it's ready to package up and sell or throw in our melter. It's got a really great look. The cold throw from that Rustic Essentials watermelon is absolutely amazing. Again, it smells just like real watermelon. None of that bubblegum, Jolly Rancher candy type smell. It smells just like a fresh cut watermelon. Let's get it in our melter, see how it looks. So that melted down great. The hot throw was absolutely amazing. Uh, strength wise, easily a 9 out of 10. Watermelon is a strong scent anyway. That uh, true watermelon from Rustic Essentials just completely fills the room. Just an absolutely amazing summer scent. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's edition of Wax Melt Wednesday. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Make sure to check out the links in the video description. If you want to check out past episodes of Wax Melt Wednesday, just check out my playlist. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.